Hello, everyone. Welcome to the channel. Today, I'm joined by a special guest, Michael Stevenson, uh, who's uh, very well known inside of the integration community. Uh, for those that may not know you, do you want to maybe just give a brief intro, Mike, uh, about your background and sort of what you're up to these days? Yeah, thanks, Kent. So hi, everybody. Um, I'm Mike. I'm based over in Newcastle in the UK. Um, Kent and I go way back in the BizTalk community um, through the MVP program. So I think I think I'm 14 years this year, or this year just gone, which is pretty unbelievable. Um, but big background in integration for years. Worked with the Logic apps for multiple years, and uh, I think we're going to talk about testing, which is one of my sort of little pet sort of subject areas I quite like. Cool. Thanks for that. Uh, Mike's also uh, an avid, accomplished golfer too. So, uh, so that's uh, we have a lot of fun talking about golf these days too. But, uh, but yeah, back in uh, Integrate in June this past spring, so like June 2022, uh, you had a session on automating the testing of of Logic Apps. And I know in the past you've done a lot of work around like automating like testing of BizTalk applications and BizTalk interfaces as well. So I understand you've been working on some uh, some tools, some collateral, some content. Uh, what what's up your sleeve? What have you been doing now these last six months in this specific area? Yeah, thanks, Ken. So I think at the integrate, I'm just going to drag a picture in here. So at integrate, we talked about the challenge of um, testing workflows in Logic Apps. So really, what it kind of comes down to is is the keynote message was about speed and agility so we tried to develop logic app solutions in days um doing mission critical workloads but the challenge with that is the more we the more we speed up the development the harder it is to deliver a good quality solution and the more we have the risk of getting it wrong or as we change stuff missing regression issues so th this thing about testing that i've talked a lot about over the over previous years becomes more important than ever so the idea is that if we can write some automated tests firstly we can check each workflow works before we put them together in a solution but also when we start changing them we can make sure we don't break them and i think that that's really like the importance of it so the, this picture here from the slide deck at integrate was um the idea is that we had this c sharp um test over on the left and we'll basically trigger the workflow let the workflow do its thing and then we get the run history and we start making some assertions to say, you know, based on the input message that I put in, did certain actions happen? You know, so did we did we have action one and three, but maybe in, in the one test we might skip action two or something like that. And um, and then just check that it works. So when we go and change it, if the test itself still relevant, we can make sure we fixed a bug and the test still passes, or we might update the test to of us some new feature we've built. And I guess that's one of the, I guess, cool things about run history. Like, I think we take that for granted sometimes, well, like compared to what we had to do with in BizTalk, right? Just around like message body tracking and all of that versus like, you know, I, I like to call it like follow the breadcrumbs with like yeah, run yeah, history. Totally. Yeah. And then being able to like run assertions against that programmatically then allows you to sort of test for those various conditions. So yeah. I'm I'm excited to learn more, but uh, that makes perfect sense to me in terms of an approach. Yeah, well, so the, the cool bit about run history, so Kent, as well, it's not just the, the actions that happen, but you've also got the body. So some of the example videos I've got, um, we can go and get the, the action, but then get the body for the input and output. And we can then start checking that that message, you know, did, did the, um, say I do a liquid transform, did the JSON that came out have, the right value for field one or something like that we can actually start checking things like that which is you know it, it's way past beyond the testing we used to do with biz talk um and it, it you know can make life so much easier but there's there's some cool stuff so if i show you um integration playbook here is where we've got all the resources so the original summit stuff from integrates on here and then we've got um it's local testing and testing against what um, the logic app being deployed to us. Here's the two different flavors that you can do. And there's a new get package to support each one, but they give you loads of um, helper methods and stuff to help you do all this testing. So if we take um, take an example from the code here, you know, this code snippet here, once once your test um, 
that you're writing it knows that the logic app's been ran. You just do this get status of the of the response action that you can see in that line of code. Then you just say, did it succeed? Did it fail or whatever? And that, that's how easy it is once you've got things all configured. You know, you just go and check all these different actions. And then what we've done is um, in this how to section, there's just a load of different videos in here. You know, if you want to know how can I test a map? Well, there's a video here that goes through how to do it with the framework. What do you do if you've got a service bus trigger? I think so. Uh, is my screen refreshed here? Second. Now you get the point anyway. There's there's a whole bunch of videos in here that show you all the different techniques. And then I've got um, so it, with the um, the two frameworks, so all the code for the frameworks on um, GitHub, and so is the, the NuGet packages on NuGet that you can just pull them in. But there's also this um, sample project that you see in here is the one from Integrate, which is all on GitHub as well. So everybody can go and have a look at all the, um, like, you know, the, the logic apps that are used for the tests are all in here. So, you know, there's a one here. Um, where it, it basically calls the Dataverse API. So you, you'll be familiar with this, Kent, from the um, Power Platform world. You, you can do this who am I call that just basically echoes back the, the service principle you've used to connect. So we can um, you know, see we're just using the HTTP action in here. But then down in the tests, we've got flavors where, say, Dataverse who am I. So I've, I've got um, spec flow and just traditional C sharp tests from from many of the tests, so people can look at how you can use it in different ways. But um, you know, you, my, my favourite way personally to do this would be with Specflow because you can get this sort of plain English um, language that you can describe your test and then write code for each statement. Um, is one way of doing it, and then the other way, if you look down in the unit tests, you've got. Um, just the vanilla C sharp way where you can see you know, kind of here I'm here I'm spinning up the um, the workflow runtime. So one of the differences why there's two flavors of the framework is that um, when you use the one that's when it's deployed in Azure, it has to connect to the logic app via the management API for Azure. So you use a service principle, connect to the management API, and you're doing all the calls against the deployed workflow. When you use the local test, and it's actually running in the functions runtime on your local machine, so you don't necessarily need anything deployed for your workflow. And um, and then when I make the calls, the framework's basically just doing a local host call to the function. You know, func.x is running it. The workflow executes, but the um, the interaction from your test, excuse me, to the workflow is basically the same. So you use this logic app test manager here. You tell it what workflow you're testing, and then you would you do um, trigger via a post. So you just pass an HTTP request to it, load the workflow run history when it's finished, and then you can just do all these check the actions like like we looked at earlier. And it's really the the same regardless of which way you're doing it. The the only real difference from a code perspective, apart from the new get package, is when you run it locally. We've got this extra bit that you wrap your code in, which I've highlighted here, where you, you're basically um, using my workflow test host builder object. And what you do there is you tell it the workflows that you want to run, and, and it kind of takes care of spinning up funk.exe behind the scenes. So when I'm doing this load and build here, um, basically I've told it which, which workflows, and it goes and gets those workflow JSON files, put them in a folder, so there's like a temp folder behind the scenes, and then it points funk.exe at the folder, spins it up, and there's your locally running logic apps, and then you can just use the tests just like we do when they're in the cloud. So very cool. So just to recap, so a uh, developer could come, basically uh, open up this project, uh, sort of use it kind of as building blocks. You've provided kind of the framework where you take care of uh, handling a lot of, like let's call it the plumbing, like connecting to the run history, uh, you can then you basically run this framework against, say, local projects. So you could be doing dev in VS Code. Uh, before you deploy, you can go ahead and do testing here. Or if you've, say, deployed and uh, say it's like a dev instance in Azure, you could also point against that target as well. 
and yeah. sort of use it in sort of either mode. Is that, is that right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think there's pros and cons of each. You know, the the thing about um, the local one is, um, you know, firstly, you don't need the deployment dependencies. Um, you know, there, there are a couple of times where you might for things like connectors and stuff. Um, but with a local one, you can start mocking some of the connectors. Um, so there's examples in the framework about mocking some of the HTTP calls. Um, so you'll see there's one for Dataverse here where I've I've got an example where I'm going to do a mock. So you can see I've, I've got this code here where I've, I've created a mock HTTP host that redirects that um, action. So we, we looked at that up here. So when the test runs, it'll actually redirect the call. Instead of calling Dataverse, it'll call my unit test. And, it, and I can kind of configure what response I want the test to get back. So, you know, if you think about it, the, the challenge of um, if you write a workflow and you've got some error handler in, how do you make the error handler run? Because you can't make the dataverse easily throw an error. So here I can I can test that error exception scenario because I can make it say, you know, in this test return an error instead of returning a good response. Um, but to me that you know the, the big win around local testing is all that mocking. But the thing about it being deployed in Azure is you, you always want that confidence. Well, it works on my machine. How do I know it works when it's deployed? And then that's when you might focus on the testing when things are in Azure because you want to do some you know additional checks that things work. And I, I kind of like, um, personally, I like using both techniques because I think it gives you that really rich, full, full test experience where you know your code's rock solid before you really hand it over to a UAT scenario. Yeah, that's a good point. I think just in terms of coverage, probably just gives you more if you sort of use the a hybrid approach. So I guess yeah. here I got a question. So you know, I would imagine this mocking would also help a little bit in the area of like static results. So naturally, like our actions do support yeah. static results. However, it does require you to say like flip a bit. And so um, if you've already deployed something, uh, that means you'd have to flip something back to redeploy it. So I would imagine yeah. this would probably help in some of those scenarios too, where you could choose to like mock sort of the response. Um, oh, and then not have to yeah. touch your configuration. Is that is that right? Yeah. The, so the challenge with um, static result, it, it's like if I've got one workflow and I've got ten tests for that workflow, different tests need different bits to be static mm. response, and it's how do you dynamically flip the different actions? With, you know, and you've got to kind of redeploy between each of them. So that that's where it gets really difficult to do. Um, and I think you, you can do this as an alternative technique to that. And and also, you know, you've, you've got the challenge with static result that you're not really calling anything. So, you know, if you've got your, your connector misconfigured in some way, you might, you know, you might not spot an error that was going to happen. Cool. So I guess what's, uh, what are your plans with this framework? Are you, um, obviously it's available now. We'll include resources, links to resources, but um is there any other things you're kind of thinking about adding uh, in the short term, or is it pretty pretty much set and you're looking for some more feedback, perhaps from the the community? Yeah, I think to be honest, I think there's it pretty much does everything I've needed it to do. So so that feedback and new ideas, I think, is, um, kind of where it is. But I, th I think the concepts something we've used, you know, in biz talk and logic app consumption for a few years now so i think the concepts are pretty rock solid um it's just using it i think that you know the couple of things that i have done that um, people might find interesting um so i've got a like a, a real world type scenario um so if i go i'll just jump into the picture for that one and show you what it looks like um so like the, this one down here and this one where you've, you've got a couple of workflows working together and you're testing them individually to make sure each one works kind of thing. Um, so the, these are up in this ship instruction scenario here. And what I've done in this processor, um, you can see here, I've, I've this is where Specflow starts coming into its own. So I've got all this extra documentation that you can write as part of your tests So really it's not just a test, it's test plus documentation. So I'm trying to help the developer that's going to look at this code in six months time after it's been working fine and nobody's touched it. But then the business asks for a change. And, you know, we've, we've got our test, but we've also got our documentation here. 
you can see things like that, that start getting cool, the links to um, that this here will become a link to a work item. So we can see the history of things that have, you know, sort of affected this interface by linking from your tests to your DevOps work items. Um, but what I can do in the tests here, because it's a bit of a rich, but then here you can get the um, you can get the content. You know, I was saying earlier about the action, so I can get the input and the output messages here. And I, you know, as well as being able to test them, there's there's also this technique you can do with SpecFlow where I can actually write them to the log up here. So you can see I've I've got this SpecFlow helper and I'm writing those two messages. And what happens is um, over in my in my Azure DevOps. So you can see I've got a pipeline up here that that I'm so in the um, in the sample project. There's a DevOps pipeline that shows you how to run the tests inside of a um, pipeline, as well as the, there's a few videos again up here in the playbook. Um, so we look down here that that show you how to run the tests in a pipeline using that example. But what I'm able to do is um, in the wiki up here. I've got this spec flow add in. So this is where I think the coolest bit is because it starts um, when I publish my test results, I can get it to sort of have documentation up here, which is actually from the tests. So you can see here all, all that stuff that was um, in that test. I can kind of see, you know, here. And if you think because we're in the DevOps environment, I can share this with people who aren't developers now. And I can kind of say, you know, here's here's this executed test, what was going on. And I can flip the test output. And you can see I've now got sample messages in my documentation here, which kind of shows me, you know, if I want to see, oh, that th this is the transformation step. And you, you know, if you imagine you're the business analyst, you want to have a look at what this integration does, you can actually see the data that fits that test scenario. And th this is where I think it starts really kind of helping out, is that being able to you know, have examples to work with for when you're changing stuff in the future. So that, that's how far I've taken this really, um, you know, to me, minimums the test and to reduce your risk. But the, the real value is getting the documentation that goes alongside it, I think, with not that much extra effort. For sure. I love the I love the traceability from end to end. Uh, that's 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 really neat. Yeah. So Actually, um, one, one thing, Ken, just to beat them bits about them tags for the work items. You see when this gets generated here, that came from the spec flow test that your business analyst could just click on that. And it'll, that that's where it'll pop open the work items that you've had historically where you've changed that interface. They'll, they'll just open up in here. So I'm gonna click that one and get it in. DevOps has been a bit slow, there we go. So that would be my, my feature that you know, cause that logic app to be created in the first place. Awesome. No, this is so cool. So I guess where can people get more information about uh, the framework and uh, and uh, learn more about this? Yeah, yeah. So um, the, my plan is um, all the videos that are in here, I'm going to start just blogging about them as well. So that the channel on my YouTube uh, channel, there's, there's a whole channel with all the testing videos in. And, I, and for my blog, I'll just be pointing to this section in the integration playbook, which is going to be the main bit where I'll probably keep most of the documentation. And you can see from here, um, these are the two links. So if you, if you use this one as the starting page, this is the two NuGet packages up here. So you can see that you know one's Logic App Standard Test and Local, and one's just normal test, and this is the Azure one. And, um, and then the code for the frameworks in GitHub here the code for the sample project. So you can see this this is the two frameworks. You can go and have a look through there. It's all got loads of documentation on. And then the sample project um, is here. But again, it all just links back to the playbook. So you'll see that's the code that I've been kind of shown through in VS Code before. Amazing. So I'll be sure to include all of these links in the description so folks can go ahead and take a look and by all means people when you're on mike's uh, youtube channel looking through the videos go ahead like and subscribe uh mike is always putting out top-notch content and tooling such as what we've just seen so make sure to, to go ahead and give him a follow so uh thanks mike for joining uh the channel uh 
make, we'll love to have you on again in the future, and uh, I'm sure we'll we'll have a, an opportunity to do so. Cheers. Thanks, everybody.